Hello dear students, welcome to the first part of the video Abnormal Molecular Masses. This is in continuity of the earlier video related to colligative properties. Just a recollection of colligative properties. What are colligative properties? Depression and freezing point, elevation and boiling point, osmotic pressure, relative lowering of vapor pressure. These four colligative properties we have already studied in four different videos. These properties are dependent on the number of particles in solution, the number of solute particles in solution. So if you notice over here, lowering of vapor pressure is proportional to the number of moles of the solute. Small letter we are using for the solute and capital we are using for the solvent. Elevation and boiling point is aviloscopic constant multiplied by molality. If similarly, depression and freezing point, Kf into molality. If we expand the term for molality, we have 1000 into Kf into weight of solute upon molar mass of the solute into the weight of the solvent. The colligative property is dependent on the number of moles of the solute in the solution or it is inversely proportional to the molar mass of the solute in the solution. So these properties depend on the number of particles. If number of particles in the solution are different from what we have estimated, then in that case, the molecular mass that we will measure and what we will calculate will be different. So we have an example over here. Uh, if you calculate the freezing point for one molar sodium chloride solution given to you Kf is 1.86 degrees that is cryoscopic constant for sodium chloride per mole solution is 1.86. So delta Tf is equals to Kf into molality 1.86 into 1 gives us 1.86 degrees. In other words the freezing point for one molar solution, sodium chloride solution will be zero. That is the freezing point of pure water minus 1.86. That is negative 1.86 degrees Celsius. But experimentally, it has been found to be negative 3.72 degrees Celsius when measured with this particular property. In other words, the theoretical value, that means what you have calculated and your experimental values do not tally, do not match. This is what is called as abnormal behavior. Why are we getting this type of differences in the readings? For this, before we go ahead with the explanation, we need to recall that when we talk about these colligative properties, there were two conditions which were required to be met for a solution to behave ideally. First, the solution should be dilute. What if the solution is concentrated? When the solution is concentrated, the solute particles, they come closer to each other. When they come closer to each other, there will be forces of attraction, new forces of attraction which will develop so they no longer behave independent of each other. When we are saying ideally means the substances are behaving or the particles are behaving independent of each other. But when they are coming close, they are not working independently. So in such a scenario, this, the behavior will deviate from an ideal situation. Second, no association or dissociation should take place either between the solute particles or between the solute and the solvent particles. The solute and the solvent particles should not interact chemically as well. What if there is association or dissociation? That will explain the abnormal behavior when we measure something experimentally. We have two categories here, association and dissociation sorry, dissociation and association. That means when the solute particles, they undergo dissociation in solution. For example, sodium chloride ionizes in solution to give us sodium and chloride ions. 
according to you, you have added only one particle of sodium chloride over here. But the solution reads it as two particles. We must remember all through this that the colligative properties are something which are dependent on the number of particles in solution. Now, according to the solution, the number of particles are two. According to your calculation, the number of particles are only one. So the number of particles actually increases in the solution. We repeat, colligative properties are dependent on the number of particles. So the value of that colligative property also increases. But colligative property is inversely proportional to molar mass. As you have seen in the expanded form over here, we, same applies over here. Only thing is instead of Kf, you have Kb. Similarly, osmotic pressure inversely proportional to molar mass. So, your colligative property experimental is inversely proportional to the molar mass over here. In other words, what will happen over here is the value of your colligative property when measured experimentally will be more than what you have calculated by pure numbers alone or the molar mass of the non-volatile solute that you would measure using any of these properties will be lower than the actual value. This is called as abnormal behavior when you talk about dissociation of particles of the solute in solution. In order to account for this difference, we introduce a factor which is called as Van Hoff factor denoted by the symbol iota, that simple i. This i is calculated molar mass divided by the experimental molar mass. Just to remember it easily, alphabetically C comes before E. So MC divided by ME. And again, we say property is inversely proportional to molar, molar mass. So the colligative property experimental divided by the value of the colligative property according to you, according to numbers, according to calculated value or the theoretical value. So iota is mc by me or the colligative property experimental upon colligative property calculated. That can be any of them, any of the four. Osmotic pressure, depression in freezing point, elevation in boiling point or lowering of, relative lowering of vapor pressure. Since MC is greater than ME in this case, the value of iota would be greater than 1. Coming to association. See the first condition, the solution should be dilute. What happens when the solution becomes concentrated? The solute particles come close to each other. The forces of interaction are increasing. In the case of a common example that we have taken is acetic acid. The particles come close to each other and they form a bonding, a temporary bonding, what we call as a hydrogen bond. Because of which, my two molecules of acetic acid, CH3COOH, according to me, I have added two moles of acetic acid, CH3COOH. But in the solution, they dimerize. That means two molecules club together to behave as one single molecule. So experimentally, this reads only as one particle rather than as two. In other words, the number of particles experimentally has actually gone down. So your experimental value of the colligative property will also go down. It will decrease. The molar mass in this case that you will observe will be more than your what you would calculate from the formula. So according to the formula, this should be 12 times 2 plus 4 times 1 plus 16 times 2. This is according, this is your calculated value. But when you do it experimentally using any of the colligative properties, it is observed that it shows a value double of its calculated value. Again, iota is mc by me or the property experimental divided by the property calculated. Here your mc, the calculated value, which was around 6, 24, 28, 32, which was around 60 over here would be 
lower than 120 over here. So the iota is actually less than 1 in case of substances which undergo association in case of solutes which undergo association in solution. This will help you to determine, supposing you get a theoretical question. So supposing I add one mole of sodium chloride and one mole of acetic acid. Now theoretically both of them should give me the same elevation in boiling point. But what we observe is that sodium chloride gives us a higher elevation in boiling point compared to acetic acid. Because sodium chloride means there are two particles in solution. Acetic acid means there are just half a particle in the solution or you can say two clubbed into one. So if I take two moles, if I take one mole of that in the solution effectively for acetic acid, two moles taken would effectively be just half a mole whereas two moles of this would, sorry, one mole of this will give me two moles of this. So that will help you to reason the behavior of the particles. Let me know your feedback. Please follow this video with abnormal molecular mass part 2 where we have also introduced another factor called as degree of dissociation and connected it to iota as well so that it's easier for you to deal with numericals. Have a good day.